Hey YouTube, Poops Lag here, and this is TurboFat, an open source game I'm making in the Godot engine. You can find the link to the source code at the GitHub page in the description below. And this month I added a few new bells and whistles to the puzzles, like you can see these stars and dots rising up from the bottom that just have little pre-made foods you can collect as a bonus. But I also participated in my first ever game jam, and I made a whole separate game from TurboFat, which I'd love to show off. So let's get started. So this is my Game Jam game Frog Finder, which I made for Terry Cavanaugh's Stop Waiting for Godot Game Jam at the start of September, and it's a pretty simple game. Every level has a frog hidden here somewhere, which you have to find, and if you don't find it, um, sometimes something bad happens, but I think I know where it is. I think it's somewhere back here, right? Oh, it wasn't there. We're getting warmer. There he is. <laughs> some of the levels are easy, and some are trickier. Let's see what the level is after this, like like this one. Where could the frog be? Um, good luck. Is it is it here? I don't understand what's going on. But figuring out the puzzles is the entire puzzle. It doesn't give you any instructions, any guidance. All, all it is is like, here's stuff, click and see what happens. So so figuring out what's going on is the entire puzzle. Uh, it's meant to be a little bit esoteric, but um, some people actually really enjoyed it. And Terry Cavanaugh, his, his free game of the week was Frog Finder after the game jam. He was like, I love this game. It was really cute. So, I was so it made me feel so good to read. If you want to see his blog post, I'll link that down below. And if you want to play the game, the game is free on Itch.io, so you can try it out there too, and I'll link that as well. Um, the other thing is, I kind of want to put Frog Finder on Steam, not because I think the whole world needs to try Frog Finder, but just because I need to put something on Steam that isn't TurboFat for practice, because everyone always says they mess up their first Steam release. I don't want my first messed up release to be TurboFat. That would just break my heart. So I'll make some mistakes releasing Frog Finder on Steam, and then I'll do better next time, right? So we'll see how that goes. Where could it be? It's right there. Ah! <laughs> So these new food power-ups are something new. So if you uh, drop a piece onto these little dots, they turn into food and they get fed to your monster right away. And these were inspired by an older game called Net 3 Revenge of the Stones from, I want to say the early 90s, where they had uh, diamonds on their level, which turned into money just when, you, when your piece passed over them. So you could just collect a whole bunch with one piece, uh, which felt really good when you like, hey, I got a lot of money, but I didn't like that design for two reasons. And the first reason is, um, yeah, from a gameplay perspective, you just have one piece and there's like 10 diamonds on the level. You just like, whoop, whoop, and you just sweep it around and you get them all. So, and then you just drop the piece where you're going to drop it anyways. So it really didn't affect anything about your decisions. It was just sort of cathartic to pick them all up. Uh, but the second thing I didn't like about it is if, you, if you're the type to play fast and want to like hard drop everything and, and you know, get a hundred pieces per minute or, or faster. Uh, well, you can't really do that if you have to swish your piece around and collect all these, all these power ups. So I like my design better where you can move your piece around, uh, but you do not collect these foods until you lock your piece into place. And then it only collects the ones that your piece ended its movement over. So I can try to like collect all these pieces and like sweep it around, ah, give me them all. No, you only get those four. <laughs> so I like that design. And uh, the second part of this is that these, these power-ups on this level, you just pick up once and they're gone, but there are some levels with slightly different ones and there is no visual re representation that they are different. So I might change that, but this is what they look like. They look identical, right? So, but up at the top, when I collect these, um, I get them and then they are actually still there. So if I clear enough lines to reveal them, uh, yep, that piece was collected and then I, I can collect it again. I can collect it 100 million times. There's no limit, uh, but the limit is every time I do that, I'm just sort of stacking this piece up in the middle where I don't really want it. So there are cool strategies, which might center around collecting those over and over and not shooting yourself in the foot, but that's for you to figure out, right? So I like this, I like this design a lot. I think it lends itself to some cool puzzle ideas. So I've expanded the level editor, so I added these food pickups now. You just drag those from the left to the right, and if you have a whole bunch to add, I made it so you can actually drag from the right, and it will just duplicate the last thing you drop. So that makes it a lot easier if you have a ton of pickups or, or bricks or anything to add. You just drag, drag really quick. The other new feature I added to the level editor is the levels that used to rise garbage from the bottom. Now you can customize what that garbage looks like. So rather than just being a row of veggies with a hole in a random place, you can say, I want my level to have this cool little pattern so that when new stuff rises up, the player is getting all these points and they're rewarded for digging. So I think this will really increase the amount of uh, different cool kinds of levels people can make. I've also added a bunch of new levels. Some levels reward you for digging in different ways. This level rewards you for stacking all your pieces on the left so you can repeatedly collect the bonuses on the right. This level rewards you for stacking all your pieces in the center of the playfield, as long as you don't die. And this level submitted from someone on the Discord only has two kinds of pieces. It's deceptively interesting. 
So all the level data is stored in these JSON files and it's properly versioned and backwards compatible. So it wasn't necessarily causing problems that I had old versions of that data everywhere, but I still wanted to bring it up to date. So I wrote a utility to do that. It just searches through all those JSON files, updates them and writes them back to disk. I bundled it together with this utility I already had, which searched for English phrases to translate. So now it's just in this one place called the release toolkit. And I think this will eventually get a lot bigger and maybe just have like a single button I press to do it all. So when I went to expand the level editor, I hit an immediate brick wall, which was that all my level data could be read from JSON, but nothing could write it back to JSON. All my code looked like you see on the left, where it would say, here's my properties. If you give me JSON, I can populate my properties, but nothing could go the other way. So I wrote a framework which would go in both directions so that now it can read and write the same properties. And then I unit tested the heck out of it uh, for two reasons. I, didn't want, I wanted to make sure it didn't break anything that already worked. But I also wanted to make sure this stuff works because uh, nothing uses it yet. Nothing actually uses the writing to JSON logic, but it will when I expand the level editor. So that's where we're at after September. We got a couple new levels. We got some new toys in those levels, which were fun. And we made, we made Frog Finder. I think that came out cool. Next month, I got two much less fun things I got to tackle. And the first is performance again, but the game runs at a really low frame rate in the browser on Android. And I think it's fundamentally because of how these monsters are all rendered where right now they're recolored and assembled from like these sunglasses and these horns and this haircut. It's all put together and recolored on the fly, which I think is just inherently gonna be slow. So I gotta come up with a more efficient way, which might be like rendering them once and saving them to a file or something. I haven't figured that part out, but I'm gonna try some things. I have some ideas. The second thing, is the way the main game loop works right now is, you know, if someone starts the game, they're like, what's Turbo Fat? Let me try it out. They have to go through this tutorial, which, which is fine. Tutorials are fine. But then they go into the overworld. They run around. They have to, they've talked to a few people. They hear a few jokes or whatever. And then they talk to someone who kicks off a cutscene. And that cutscene, uh, you know, they have a little dialogue. And then they and then they go into a level. And it's like all, all the way at the end is, is what I think is the best part of the game. Like the puzzle. That should be at the front, right? So I kind of want to redesign the game to be puzzle centric, where it'll be more like puzzle, 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 and then a little cutscene. And I have some ideas for how to do that. And I think it'll be more fun for, for everybody. So I, at the end, it's all, it's all about making a better game. And I did love my story. I hope I get to tell it someday, but eh, you know, we'll see. Maybe in, maybe in uh, Turbo Fat 2, right? <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next month. We'll see what I can come up with. Later.